Good morning everyone and welcome to this very special Dominion Day edition of Live Like a Pioneer. And today we are going to be doing something extra special that the early settlers would have enjoyed a lot but not have had very often. It's something that you probably enjoy very much, especially in the hot weather. And you know, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. So we're going to be making ice cream today. So this machine here is my early version of an ice cream maker. So in order to do this activity, let's just take it on apart at the very beginning. So that's all ready for us when we want to make our ice cream. Now, you need a couple of things to make your ice cream, but probably the most important one and the one that was the most difficult to get for early settlers was ice. Because do you want ice cream in the winter? Most people don't, I really do. I love eating ice cream in the winter time, but the majority of the time you think of eating ice cream in the summer. So you need to have ice, but where are you going to get ice in the summer if you are a pioneer? If there's no electricity, there's no freezers to make ice from the water that you have. So you'd have to store it. So I have, a pop culture reference for you. Do you remember at the beginning of Frozen? Yeah, the movie Frozen with Anna and Elsa. When Kristoff is a very, very little boy and he's out on the lake with all of the gentlemen and they're singing about the, the heart of frozen ice, okay? They're getting ice off of the lake. That's what these would have helped me with if I was a pioneer or an early settler. These are ice tongs. So someone, just like Kristoff's group of friends would have been responsible for getting ice and they would have gone out onto a lake or a large pond cut through the ice and they would have gotten that and put it in a great big deep hole underground and they would have lined that hole with sawdust and blankets and straw to keep it very cold now we often think oh well blankets keep me warm but that's because blankets reflect your heat they're insulators so the blankets and the sawdust and the straw, they would have insulated the ice and kept it cold. So it would be ready for you when you needed it. So you need ice first. Now, obviously I don't have a hole in the ground so that I can keep ice cold here at the Pioneer Village. So I am going to cheat. And I got my trusty bag of ice down the road. So I have my ice here, but this is much in a block. So I have to break it up. So that one, we're ready for it. I have my ice. Now, do you think like an early settler, I have gone out and milked my cow? Nope, don't have a cow here at the Pioneer Village, especially not this year. We have to make sure that we're keeping everything safe. So all of our farm animals right now, they're still at home on their farms. Maybe we'll get chickens, we aren't sure yet, but we'll see what happens. But we don't have a cow here at the Pioneer Village. so. I also had to go to my very trusty general store, my grocery store, in order to get my ingredients for my ice cream. So if I was a early settler, I would have gone to my cow, milked my cow, and gotten my whole milk. So I first need some whole milk, or as close as I can get it here in Canada. I also need cream, so I would have had to separate some more milk so I could get cream. So I have my cream here. Those are the two really important ingredients that I need very first of all. So to make my ice cream, I have my ice cream maker here. This is the inner section. So this is like the bowl. It has some blades inside that when we turn it, we'll turn the ice cream because this is an ice cream churn, just like you have a butter churn. We call it ice cream maker, but it's a churn. So I need my cream. Oh, this is my cream. I need my cream. So I need two cups of cream. So I have a little measuring cup here. Did pioneers have measuring cups? No, they didn't. So they would have used things like mugs and glasses in order to get their measurements correct. So I have my measuring cup here. Let's get a cup of cream. Here's one. Now my recipe calls for two 
cups of cream. Do you think that pioneers had recipe books? Yes, but most of the time, because pioneers didn't have measuring cups, things were measured in weight, things were measured in relation to each other, so you would have had to do a little guesswork and do a little math and figure out exactly how much you needed for how many people you had. So you couldn't just double a recipe. You would often tell things by look. And we'll talk about that in another Dominion Day edition of our Live Like a Pioneer series when we're gonna be talking about Victoria sponge cake. So I need another cup. I need another two cups of whole milk or homogenized milk here in Canada. I don't have whole milk that I can get easily at the store. There's one. Here's two. Pour that in. Excellent. Close that up so it'll stay a little bit colder until I can get back to my fridge. Now, do you think pioneers had fridges? We said they didn't have a freezer, but do they have a fridge? Well, they did, but it would have taken ice, like we're using for our ice cream, that would have had to come from the lake to keep it cold. So I will insert a picture here. This is an ice box. This is what a pioneer refrigerator or an early settler refrigerator would look like. And inside you'd have a section for your ice and you'd have a section for the things that you're gonna keep cold. So I have my milk. Now I need something to make my ice cream sweet. So what do we use? We use sugar. So I have some sugar here. This is refined in Canada. Now, early settlers, did they have white sugar? They did, but it was very, very expensive. It could be the equivalent of $200 today to get a small amount of sugar because it would have had to come from very far away in the Southern United States. So they often would have used brown sugar, which they could have made. They would use more often maple sugar because we have lots of maple trees here and we have to make maple, maple syrup. That's a lot most things would have been uh, sweetened with. So you can use your maple syrup. They also used honey to make things sweet. So I need some sugar. How much sugar do I need, do you think? Well, I put in four cups of liquid in here. So we're gonna put in three quarter cups of sugar. There we go. Wrap up my sugar so no bugs get in it. Put it back in my trusty picnic basket and we'll pour that on in. Now obviously I used liquid in my measuring cup first so I have sugar inside. That's okay. Now what kind of ice cream do I want? Well pioneers most of the time they would have used just like this but we also would have had vanilla extract. So I have some vanilla extract here. I'm just gonna pour a dab in here. I like vanilla a lot, so I'm probably gonna pour in more than they would have called for, but probably about a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon. Of probably about two teaspoons is good. Now, you also would have needed salt. So, don't want that salt. I have a tiny bit of salt here. This is some kosher salt. Just want a couple pieces of salt in here. Just a pinch to help bring out the flavor. And those are all your ingredients. I will put them in the description of what I used in my Pioneer ice cream maker. So I'm gonna turn this around a little bit. It helps dissolve the, ingredient, the sugar and the salt in here. Now we're ready to put in our ice cream churn. Now this part takes a while, so we might have to take a break for a little while and we'll come back when we're done this process. But the very first thing I need to do is put my bowl or my internal cylinder inside my ice cream maker. Stick it there. If you have a friend to hold this straight up and down, that's the best because then you don't get ice underneath. So pour in some ice around the outside. If some ice falls into your churn, that's okay. We're gonna pull this on top of our bowl now that we have a little bit in here. And then it likes to just pour the ice in. 
I'm going to try and keep it nice and straight. You might have to shake it every once in a while. I'm probably going to use about this whole bag of ice. that ice in there. I have some garbage, so remember you have to put your garbage in the garbage can. I don't have a garbage can with me, so we'll put that in the garbage can later. The last thing I need is some salt to pour around my ice. Now a lot of people will say, well, Allison, we pour ice on our, on this, or we pour salt on the ice in the winter time to help it melt. That's true, but putting salt on your ice also helps make it colder. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? So we're just pouring some of this in here. Just make this extra cold. You might have to add salt a couple times. That's okay. Now I need my churn. So this part goes over. This is my crank so that when I'm making my ice cream, I don't have to turn using my hand the whole time. I remember I said that you want to try and make it that it's straight as possible. This is why, because sometimes when you get, oh, you don't have an extra set of hands, it can be hard to get your ice cream maker to close. So, we're gonna shift this a bit, and we're gonna lean on it. And I'm gonna turn. This part, like I say, takes a long time. So guys, bear with me. I'm gonna turn for a while and we'll be back and we'll see what our ice cream looks like. We'll see you soon. Well guys, I've been turning for about half an hour or so. So let's see what our ice cream looks like. Take this handle off. Now that the ice is all settled, it's a little sticky sometimes. So you gotta finagle this off. Drop the lid. Hmm, looks like ice cream to me. Now, there's lots of melted ice in there now, so we won't be able to get this back in, but that's okay. Let's take a look here. Want some ice cream in there, folks. Looks kind of like, it's kind of like a frosty that you might get at Wendy's. That's good. So what I will do with this is I can put it into a airtight container, like a, a plastic container or a glass container. Put this in my freezer, since I am not like a pioneer. Uh, like I always say, you can live like a pioneer without being a pioneer. So I will put this in my freezer and I will be able to enjoy this a little bit later. But most of you probably don't have a large ice cream churn at home. So how can you make ice cream at home without an early settler ice cream churn? Well, that's what we're gonna do next. So you will need a couple of things. You will need a mason jar. Obviously, a measuring cup, since again, we aren't pioneers, we can use a measuring cup. And we'll need some of the same things that we used a little bit earlier. Not all the same ingredients though. So for this recipe, you only need four things. So I need some heavy cream, so here's my heavy cream. We'll get a cup of that. We need some vanilla extract again. I'm gonna pour this in with my cream. That was a lot, but that's okay. I like vanilla. We need some granulated sugar, so we will add that after we pour this into our jar. So we need about mm, a tablespoon and a half of granulated sugar, since this is just a little bit of ice cream. So this is not as sweet as the other ones that we've done. Now, with this ice cream recipe, we're just gonna eyeball that. You can add other things, so if you want to add berries, if you want to add mint flavoring, if you want to add chocolate chips, you can do all of those things. Whatever you want to put in your ice cream, you can do that. So, we have our ice cream. We need a little bit of salt, not that salt. This one. Now, 
pour a tiny bit of salt in here, just a couple of grains. There we go, pinch of salt, and we'll put our lid back on. Now this recipe, much like if you wanted to make butter at home using a mason jar, requires you to use your Pioneer Muscles. So we need to shake this jar for three to five minutes until this about doubles in size. So we'll do that for a while. And then what you wanna do is you wanna put this into your freezer for about three hours. So again, you can live like a Pioneer without being a Pioneer. So I'm gonna use my trusty modern freezer to put this in later. So we'll shake this for a while. We'll check back in when we can see what about double size looks like. And then we'll check it again after we've put it in the freezer. We'll see you soon. Hi everybody, this is Allison. I took my daily constitutional walk and was shaking my mason jar ice cream at the same time. I wanted to show it to you, check in with you about what it looks like, and then we're gonna put it in the freezer. So, let's open this jar. This is a little tricky with one hand. Let's put this down. So, if we take a look here. Kinda looks like batter in there. So, what we wanna do now, seal this up nice and tight, and we're gonna put this in the freezer for a couple of hours, okay? So, we'll see what it looks like a little later. See you soon. So it's been a couple of hours. It's time to check on our mason jar ice cream. Remember guys, there is an issue with over shaking your jar, so don't do that. Sometimes whipping cream works better than heavy cream, so it is, like they say, an art. Um, it takes a lot of science, but it takes practice and lots of trying. So, here we go. Have our mason jar. And we have our ice cream. So, give it a taste. Give it a taste, it's pretty good. It's all right. Like the other one better. That could just be the pioneer in me. So try it out. Remember, try whipping cream. I think it will work better than heavy cream personally, but try whipping cream um, and enjoy friends. Have a great day and hope you're having a wonderful Dominion Day stay at home edition. We'll see you soon. Bye.